Good Sunday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. We are live and direct on Periscope and Twitter for tonight. And as of right now, we've got, again, some pretty quiet conditions in the Mid-South area. We look to be staying pretty quiet into the course of the next several days. That's great news if you have anything going on outdoors. We'll be talking about a couple more cold fronts coming through as we go into the course of the rest of the next couple of days. But we're also going to continue to see some problems with very dry weather across much of the Mid-South as we get into around the later portion of this week toward this next weekend. There might be the possibility of some showers, emphasis on the word some, as we get into around the area close to Saturday and Sunday. We're just not looking at, again, at a lot of anything involving huge amounts of precipitation anytime soon, which is odd in and of itself because of the fact that this is November, typically is one of the wettest months of the year for the Mid-South area. So again, something to consider if you're going to be doing anything outdoors when it comes to wildfires and things of that nature. If you're on Periscope and Twitter, please again stop by and say hello. Drop your uh, location and any weather reports you have in and around the Mid-South into and around the area of the comments section. We'd love to have you along for the ride there. And welcoming in everybody on my Facebook page as well. Again, just past 8.30 on Sunday evening. We continue again to see some quiet conditions out there. If you've never tuned in here before and you're on Periscope and Twitter, you can see again the data for social media over here, wreg.com slash weather. The radar information over here on the lower corner of your screen, the forecast scrolling down toward the bottom portion of your screen. If you're on Facebook, again, thanks for joining us. And if you have any questions about the forecast or want to see, again, specifically what's going on in your area, we'll try to do as best we can on a local version here. But let us know your location and your weather reports out across the area. So drop them into the comment section. We'd love to know more about what it looks like in your area for tonight. Let's go ahead and get started and show you more about what it looks like as we go into overnight. Temperatures as we head toward Dawn Patrol tomorrow morning should be back in the mid-30s about the time Todd Demers is on the air with his forecast. Plenty of sunshine tomorrow. Coffee break weather around News Channel 3 live at 9, lower to mid 40s, 50s by lunchtime. And by the time the kids get out of school in the Mid South, should be looking at temperatures back in the lower 60s with mainly clear skies across much of the area. So decently quiet out there, which means for the time we get into tomorrow on the 11th of December for Monday, it's going to be very cool at the bus stop, mid to upper 30s, light winds. So not much of a wind chill, but noticeable. And if you have any plans again for later on during the day kids walking or bike riding home. It will be a little breezy. Southwest winds about 10 to 15 miles per hour plus. And again, dry with very comfortable temperatures. If you like this weather, that's great. If you don't, you want the cold weather back, stick around. We'll be taking a look at that in the forecast in just a little bit. No earthquakes to report in the last 24 hours. Yes, technically this has nothing to do with weather, but being so close to the New Madrid fault, we like to make certain that we are keeping a very close eye on anything seismologically going on. And if you'd like to keep track of this. All you have to do is visit the United States Geological Survey, earthquakes.usgs.gov, or our own Center for Earthquake Research and Information at the University of Memphis. That's at memphis.edu slash CERI. Great opportunity to keep track as to what's going on out there. Very quiet between Crosby Hall and the Student Union. Lots of empty parking spaces out there as the semester has come to an end and finals have wrapped up on the campus for Ole Miss. Vaught-Hemingway Stadium lit up in red last night. Not quite so bright tonight, but a very quiet Oxford, Mississippi right now. Temperatures in Germantown back in the mid-40s. Westerly winds about 5, giving you a wind chill in the lower 40s. Lights of Poplar and Mendenhall around Clark Tower. And just behind the sign here, you can see the lights of Poplar Pike and Germantown Parkway. So a nice view into and around the area there. Taking a look at I-40 and Sycamore View, downtown Memphis lights on the horizon on our transmitter tower camera for tonight. Uh, Tammy Gibson, the, the, thank you very much for tuning in and watching. I just stand up here and blather a lot, but uh, thank you very much for tuning in and for the complimentary words out there. Decently clear view tonight, not a lot going on. Again, where visibility is concerned. We're keeping our eyes on travel for anybody taking a red-eye flight tonight. No delays being reported from the FAA for Memphis International. We are seeing a few delays in and around the area of Newark, around New Jersey, major airport there with a lot of people moving on through. So again, we could see 
some problems there. But the main thing we're uh, letting you know about this for right now from the FAA, from anywhere around Los Angeles or San Diego, anything around Southern California with air travel, you've got smoke from the wildfires and you've got Santa Ana winds howling down those canyons and the mountaintops of 70 to 80 miles per hour possible. So if you have any plans to travel to LAX, you may be running into some delays there and some choppy travel as you head across Southern California. So please keep that in mind. Also, if you'd like to get this information on your computer, visit this website. All you have to do is go to fly.faa.gov and you can find out more information about what's going on on your computer. Back to the area around 240 in Poplar. Traffic is moving along well. Good visibilities and the lights of West Memphis easily visible back there on the horizon for right now. Storm Tracker 3S radar has nothing on it at this point in time, so very much on the quiet side at this point. Bart Thompson, 42 degrees over by the airport. Thank you very much for that weather report for tonight. Appreciate all that the weather reports you guys uh, put into the comments section. Really do like having that around. Good citizen science, amateur meteorology things going on for there. Currently, we're watching our next storm system. It doesn't look like much. It's up into the northern Plain states, just making its way into the continental United States, right across the Canadian border. This is called an Alberta Clipper. It's a very fast-moving system. That's the nickname of it, like those old, fast-moving sailing ships from a long time ago. These things drop down out of Canada, usually cross around the northern plains, the Great Lakes, and cause a lot of snow showers, which is exactly what the last one did. Remnants of that now tracking its way back over toward the Canadian Maritimes. And the next one is on its way in just north of the Dakotas. You can see that counterclockwise swirl right there as it gets a little closer to us. Now, between between here and there, there is a cold front developing right across the northern plain states. It's very moisture starved. There's just enough moisture with this for some light showers and maybe again a little bit of some uh, snow shower activity mixed in there. But the main thing with this is going to be the colder air coming in behind this, and that's going to be making its way into the mid south as we go into the next couple of days. So the front is already on its way. It's going to take better part of tomorrow before it gets all the way here, and then right after that. We've got some colder temperatures heading our direction. Let's run the numbers into the rest of tonight through News Channel 3 at 10 and overnight. Temperatures will be back in the mid to upper 30s. Notice the winds, the moving lines on screen will be coming in from out of the south, so we'll be looking at some fairly breezy conditions at times into tomorrow. Back in the lower to mid 30s for tomorrow morning's lows. 40s, lower 40s by the time we hit about News Channel 3 live at 9. And then by the time the kids head home from school, upper 50s to lower 60s. That next front is going to be on the way dinner time and just afterwards winds ahead of that front out of the south a little bit of cloud cover possible but that's going to be about all the moisture that we're really seeing out of this and behind that front winds coming in from out of the northwest now what does that mean for our temperatures well it's going to be a cool start to tuesday that's for certain with temperatures going back into the lower to mid 30s we don't seem to have too much of a problem with fog tomorrow morning but we are seeing some signs of visibilities down around four miles or less from west tennessee into northern parts of Mississippi, just scattered activity also around Crowley's Ridge around Forest City. Could be some fog and haze there, so something to look out for. Not enough for a dense fog advisory, but something to take a look for anyway tomorrow. And if there is fog, Todd will let you know on daybreak. Tomorrow's highs, beautiful. Sunshine back in the mid-60s. Cold front arrives post-dinner time tomorrow evening, and that cold air spills into the mid-south, so we'll see lows around freezing Tuesday morning and highs on Tuesday in the mid-40s, about 20 degrees cooler than what we see on Monday, so definitely a shift in temperatures. We remain dry into the next several days, not seeing too much of anything out there to really help us out with rainfall until we get into the area of Saturday and Sunday. That's where we see the potential of some rain showers out there. It's not much. It's all we've got at this point in time, and that's about as good as it gets for the time being. And this is kind of weird in and of itself because November into early December is typically one of the rainier periods of time for this area of the country, and we're just not getting that at this point. So we may be looking at some sort of pattern shift at this point, so just something to kind of keep an eye on there. Likewise, at this time, too warm for anything but rainfall. No thunderstorms seen, no potential of thunderstorms at this time. And as you can see, it's definitely too warm for anything involving rainfall across the Mid-South. We just do not see anything out there that's really going to help us out to keep us a little bit more moist. Is That's what we need at this time of the year when it gets very dry. And here's why. This is something that is getting kind of serious once again. About two, three weeks ago, much of Arkansas, with the exception of only a couple of counties, were under burn bans and 
Arkansas was heading toward the extreme area on the scale of wildfire danger. They were up to around high before we got with that last couple of cold fronts ago that brought the rainfall in. Now, as of right now, Cross and Mississippi counties in the News Channel 3 viewing area are the only counties under burn bans, but notice how many other burn bans are in effect across much of Arkansas. If you're going camping anytime soon, uh, anything outdoors involving fire or flame, if you're going camping, check to make certain you can have a campfire set up. Some places will not allow that. It's illegal under certain circumstances, especially with this going on. And even if you don't have a burn ban for your particular county, you really should be very, very careful with anything involving fire or flame out across much of the area. D. Rye Caddy 1, thanks for joining us on Periscope for tonight. There aren't any burn bans for West Tennessee or Northern Mississippi, checking in with the forestry divisions of their state government for right now. Nothing in Mississippi, and Tennessee really does not issue burn bans on a county by county basis unless it's absolutely a very serious situation. Uh, again, at this time of the year, you're going to need burn permits for for certain things, and a lot of places will not issue those burn permits because of the fact that it's so dry and wildfires can get going very easily. So welding torches, anything in the way of outdoor work with welding, uh, anything involving burning of grass or leaves or trash, which is not a good idea for the environment to begin with. And then also, it may sound petty in a way, but it's just safety's sake, that cigarette butt has got to stay in the car instead of chucking it out the window. A lit cigarette butt can can create a large wildfire very quickly that can threaten property and life. So that could threaten any firefighter that goes out there uh, to try, try to take care of stuff like that. Oxford 35, thanks for joining us on Periscope for this evening and everybody on Facebook as well. So again, over the next few days, even though you don't have burn bans in your particular county, Mississippi and Cross being the only two in Arkansas in the viewing area that do have burn bans in effect, this will change probably over the next few days until we get some good soaking rain rainfall. So please keep that in mind again for outdoor activities. Again, you can have a barbecue pit going as long as you have proper protection, a hose ready to go, some buckets of water or sand just in case, and keeping an eye on what's going on and not letting that barbecue pit unattended for a long period of time. That could be something that could be become very dangerous in a very short amount of time. We're not seeing conditions as bad as they are back across Southern California, but they can get fairly bad for certain locations over the next few days as that dry weather continues. Over the next few hours, temperatures again back in the lower 40s. And by the time we hit News Channel 3 at 10 in about an hour or so, uh, hour and a half, we're going to be looking at winds fairly light and still pretty dry and chilly out there. Thanks to everybody for some great pictures out there. Naomi P80 underscore Naomi, thank you very much for a double shot. This was sunset on Friday. We couldn't get the other picture in here. Uh, this is something that, again, we're looking at the uh, sunset from Friday, so thank you very much for a great picture on that. Savcap123 on Twitter, great shot from sunset on Friday, so thank you very much uh, for sending that along. And another one from James R. Gulledge from around the area of Humboldt, around the Chronicle, and believe, I believe that's around the newspaper uh, in Humboldt, Tennessee, if I'm not mistaken. So thank you, Mr. Gulledge, for sunrise light from Saturday morning as those clouds cleared off across the area. If you've got pictures, please tweet them along to me, Aonic underscore WRAG3 here on my Facebook page and also on Instagram at Aonic, no underscore necessary, WRAG3. Would love to have you along uh, for the ride. So again, thanks to everybody for keeping an eye on what's going on with the weather out there. Bill Palmy, welcome on uh, Periscope for tonight. Dante00069, welcome to the show and Periscope. And thanks to everybody for again joining me on Facebook for this evening as well. I'll have more on your forecast throughout the rest of what's left of Sunday on Country 92.5 and oldies 102.3 so stick around for more uh, information on that and of course bright and early tomorrow morning starting at 8 a.m with bob and josh on talkback live you can reach them on twitter at talkback live and listen to them on am 7 30 from 8 to 10 monday through friday morning if you can't get them on the radio you're out of range join them on talkbacklivenetwork.org great sports chat great sports guests in the mid-south area and a great opportunity to talk about current events and other news stuff going on so join them again monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m.
p.m. And of course, welcome Todd Demers back tomorrow morning. He'll be back from vacation starting tomorrow morning on daybreak, bright and early at 4.30 in the morning. Questions, concerns, comments, ideas, if you're on Periscope, again, you look right here and you can see the email address, austin.onic at wrg.com, and we'll find out more about what's going on with the rest of the forecast. We'll be on a little late tonight on News Channel 3 at 10, thanks to NFL football kind of running over by just a little bit. So join us at about 10.15 or so. Uh, Kristen Holloway will have more on the day's news. I'll have your weather forecast, and Mike Sadie will have a busy day in sports, including that very snowy football game up around the Buffalo Bills area territory uh, for today. Poor visibility, but if you're a football fan, didn't bother you to stick out there and watch that, even though it was basically a blizzard going on out there. More information on weather, drop by our main weather page at wrg.com slash weather. I'm glad to have you along for the ride where it comes to our Facebook page out there as well. So stick around for more on that with social media with News Channel 3. On air and online with News Channel 3, we'll keep you updated on that. Live and direct from downtown, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for Sunday night's edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime.